Okay, so I'm going to model a uh, simple dwelling as a way of introducing uh, Revit to new users particularly. And so I'm going to begin with uh, Revit 2016. I've just started the program. And then under projects on the left, I'm going to click on uh, architectural template to begin a new file. Don't worry about that. And you can see there, the first thing to check is that it's opened with ground floor as the open view in the project browser. And that we can see the views there in the shape of the compass in the center of the drawing area. So I've got to use the wheel on the mouse to zoom in by rolling it backwards and forwards. Uh, and zoom out obviously to uh, if you roll it backwards and then to pan, hold down the wheel uh, and uh, move the cursor to move the view left, right, up and down. And I'm going to begin then by drawing some reference planes following the diagram in the, um, in the handout. So you'll see following on from the overview there that I've given of the Revit interface which you should read through and get a good idea uh, what these different areas are called. If you scroll through to the um, past the page on keyboard shortcuts, which you should come back to later on, you can see there I've just explained the, the template that you should use to begin, as I've just done. And then following on from that, I have an explanation of the reference plane tool, which is where I'm going to begin drawing. Okay, so back into Revit, and you'll see on the architecture panel, in the or the architecture tab, in the very last panel, you have the reference plane tool. Which I'm going to click there. Don't worry if the button is larger than mine, as long as it says reference plane or ref plane. Then I'm going to click a point just below the section line. And then take the cursor directly up so that I've got a reference plane at 90 degrees to the first point or vertical, and then I'm going to come across and draw a second plane that's parallel to the first one. And notice how it's only now that I get a distance between this and the previous plane. Don't worry too much about the exact length of these planes, the distance between them is all that really matters. So I deliberately made that the wrong size, or the wrong spacing, but I at least lined the ends up and now I can easily click onto that dimension that comes up between the two planes and change that to 7000. Okay, so looking at the diagram there, you can see we have this spacing between those two planes. Now I want to draw two more planes that cross those. So here I'm going to start not at the end of that reference plane, but to the left and above that endpoint. I'm going to click to start and then come over to the right and make sure I cross over those two existing planes. And this time, let's have a little bit more um, of a look at the extension line that comes up. You can see when I hover in line with the plane below, that if I'm in line with the endpoint there, it'll give me an extension projecting from that line and or from that reference plane and then coming across to the left, I'll get another projecting extension line when I'm in line with the endpoint on the left hand side. So I'll click to place that uh, second point and using the grips you can easily adjust those positions having already created the plane. As before I can click on that dimension to change that measurement. If you lose any of those things I'm going to do that now by pressing escape twice to cancel the reference plane tool. So I've lost those, uh, those options, but I can easily select any of these reference planes and then either use the grips at the end to change their length or click on the measurement there that comes up between them. And if you find that you're missing a measurement, it's usually because the planes are not parallel. So you need to make sure those planes are parallel to both the vertical and horizontal plane that you've drawn initially. 
Okay, so we've got that basic setup, and following on from that, I can now draw my first set of walls. So on the subsequent page, you'll see an explanation of the wall tool, read through that, and then perform the task that I've explained there, which is to draw four walls. So remember, when you have tools such as the wall tool where there's a, an option arrow there, or down arrow in this case, uh, you'll get lots of different options, which at first you might not uh, be sure of. So instead, it's usually a better idea to click on the tool above that line. And you can see there, if I click on the wall button there, it'll use the default option, so I don't need to choose any sub-option. And now, the first thing I need to set is the type of wall by going to the what's called the type selector in the properties panel which will give me a list of different kinds of walls that I can create. I'm going to choose a very simple one which is the 200 mil wall and then check on the options bar that it's first set to height and then in the panel after that choose level 1 to set the height of the wall to match that. Uh, and then following on from that you need to set the location line to finish face exterior and then simply draw a wall starting on any of the intersections where those two reference planes cross and very importantly go clockwise from that point you'll know if it's uh, drawn the wrong way when you draw anti-clockwise because the walls will go outside of the reference planes, you want them to go inside. So you can see there the wall is below that reference plane and now I can go to the next intersection and coming down, continuing in a clockwise direction, the wall will be now to the right of that reference plane, meaning it's on the inside of the building. So keeping in that clockwise direction and then I can go back to the first point so that all four walls are connected. And I'll press escape twice now to finish drawing walls temporarily. Ok, so I've got those four main walls drawn. Now I want to create the extension and again I'm going to use reference planes to establish those main dimensions. So panning so I can see that corner clearly, then again use the reference plane tool and then click onto the corner of the building on the outside of those walls. Top right corner and I'm going to come up, notice I'm panning and zooming as I draw, but that's fine, and uh, I'm going to go at 45 degrees, trying to get the length about right, but it doesn't matter, you can always extend it if it's not long enough. So the main thing is that it's at 45 degrees, don't worry if you get a measurement coming up that says 135, that just means it's measuring in the opposite direction, and, uh, and that's fine. Now I'm going to draw a new reference plane by clicking on a point in, in space essentially to the right of the plane I've just drawn and I'm going to come down to the left and make sure it crosses over the building and also that it is par uh, parallel to the previous plane so it may come up as 135 degrees, that's fine it's still parallel to the previous plane and now I can change that dimension to 2000 and then draw another plane to the left of the first angled plane and again coming down to the left if it says 135 degrees that is fine it's still 45 degrees measured the other way and again now I can change that measurement to 2000 so that I have two reference planes at 45 degrees either side of a centre line which is giving me a 4 metre overall dimension between those two planes. Now I'm going to draw a reference plane again starting from the corner point the same corner I used before so clicking on the reference plane tool again I will make sure if I have to I'll zoom in to get that end point on the corner of the walls and go up and to the left and this time make sure it snaps to 135 degrees. Now I'm going to click and drag on that open circle to extend that reference plane at the same angle down and to the right. 
And now, as previously, I'm going to draw a new reference plane and make sure it's parallel to the previous one. So this time it will say 45 degrees if I'm drawing top to bottom. And then change that measurement this time to 4000, which will give me essentially a 4 metre by 4 metre extension. Now back to the wall tool and I will start by clicking on the intersection between that reference plane and the wall and then go up and to the right to the corner and then just trace around those intersection points to get those three walls. Okay, so zooming in you can see they uh, trace or follow exactly those reference planes. And then to see that in 3D I'm going to, on the quick access toolbar, click on the little 3D house icon. You may need to click on the black double arrows there to get that to come up. And we can see a 3D view of those walls.